Thursday morning. It's the 6th of February. It's half past six. With the news and sport this morning, here's Sarah Wakefield. Thanks. Good morning. A disabled man is claiming victory over York's Barbican Centre after he challenged their policy on ticket prices. Doug Pawley was told he'd have to buy another ticket for his carer. When he went to watch a show, many other venues allow people with disabilities and their carers to share a ticket between them. SMG, which runs the Barbican, has agreed to change its policy. Now, this morning, victory for a disabled man who says ticket prices at York Barbican discriminated against him. The theatre has now agreed to change its policy. His lawyers say it's the first legal case of its kind and it'll have an impact on all sporting and entertainment venues right across the UK. Well, Alan Watkins is here from our newsroom to tell us more. Alan, what happened here? Well, this is the legal firm Unity Law. They're based in Sheffield. They've told us that a group of disabled people from a care home in Weatherby were planning to go to the Barbican in York. Among them was uh, a chap called Doug Pawley. Now, they were asked to pay full price for tickets for both themselves and their carers. Other theatres apparently charged the disabled customer and their carer for one ticket uh, between them. Now, Mr Pawley brought this case on behalf of eight people from that care home in Weatherby. He says that they have no choice but to take their carers with them. They rely on them when they go to the theatre. And he, ad he adds that this kind of policy essentially keeps disabled people away from social venues and he felt that something had to be done. Okay, so what was the outcome? Well, the operators of York Barbican, SMG Europe Limited, have admitted that they discriminated against Doug Pawley with their ticket pricing policy. They have now agreed to change it. So now all visitors to York Barbican who need a, need a carer with them will pay for one full price ticket between them. Uh, this was all settled out of court the night before the trial over this was due to begin at Harrogate County Court. Implications then, Alan. What are the implications for all this? Well, the lawyers say that this is the first legal case of its kind. It will change ticket pricing policies, not just at York Barbican, but at sports and entertainment venues across the UK. The operators of York Barbican, SMG, run a number of venues across the north, including the first direct arena in Leeds, Phones for You Arena in Manchester, the Metro Radio Arena in Newcastle, and the Playhouse in Whitley Bay, amongst others. The lawyers have told us there are different policies at the these venues, and uh, all of this is now up for review. What have the the, op the theatre's operators themselves had to say? Then? Well, last night SMG Europe issued us a statement. This is what it says: We are disappointed that the issue with Mr. Pawley has got to this stage. We have actively worked with him and his representatives to gain a mutually satisfactory outcome. At the time, Mr. Pawley inquired for tickets at York Barbican. Our policy was to give a discounted price ticket for a necessary carer. As this event only had one ticket price, we were unable to action our policy. And this uh, statement from SMG Europe goes on to say, We are committed to ensuring that access and enjoyment of all events is available to everyone. As such, we have clarified the policy to remove this anomaly so that the combined total price for a visitor and carer will be equal to the cost of one full price ticket. Alan, thanks for that. Alan Watkiss from our newsroom. Well, after seven this morning, morning we'll be talking to Lucy Angus from Unity Law, the lawyer involved in this case, and after eight we'll be talking to Doug Pawley, who's a disabled man at the centre of the story. <laughs> BBC Radio York. We can talk now to Lucy Angus, who's the lawyer involved with this case from uh, Unity Law. Lucy, good morning. Good morning. First of all, just tell us what happened to Doug Pawley. Um, him and uh, seven others from the care home that he lives in tried to go to the York Barbican. One of, the, one of their carers tried to book the tickets for them all and found that if they were to attend, they would have to pay for two tickets per person uh, simply because they wished to bring their carers with them. Um, Doug obviously felt that this, this was not right um, as it meant that they could not attend and so uh, they contacted the Barbican about this. Um, eventually we, we got involved with it um, as we felt it was a very good case and like you, like you said previously it's the first case of its kind um, and it's established a legal precedent that hopefully other venues will follow. What would normally happen in, in purchasing a ticket? Uh, Many venues have uh, a policy whereby a disabled person can purchase a ticket at a discounted rate uh, for themselves and for their carer. 
they're effectively uh, add up to the, the price of one fully priced ticket or they just provide a discount uh, for both tickets that means that they're not paying two full price tickets. Right, so would it be fair to say then that it's, it's quite unusual for theatres such as Yacht Barbican to, to charge full price for both the disabled person and their carer? I think throughout the UK there are varying policies, um, some like the Barbicans and some that have, that have already implemented these amended policies. Uh, so it's sort of something that will, will have an effect uh, because not, not every, every place will have policy like this already. And what's your Barbican agreed to do about this? Um, they have agreed, uh, they've, they've set an excellent example in changing their policy to ensure that disabled customers are not charged for two full price tickets should they be accompanied by a carer. Um, the policy effectively um, removes the barrier um, for the disabled community uh, and allowing them to attend. I mean, uh, part of the reason behind the Equality Act was social inclusion. Uh, the provisions were intended to remove the barriers so that the disabled community could sort of have the same choices as the able-bodied community. Um, so, in, in in changing this policy, uh, it means that the disabled person and their carer will only have to purchase purchase the ticket at the cost of one fully priced ticket rather than two. And York Barbican, as we know, is run by SMG UK Limited. They also run venues in Leeds, Manchester, Newcastle, for example. Yeah. Do they have different policies at different venues, and, and are they going to change those policies now? Uh, SMG are going to have uh, set the policy to be the same throughout their venues. What's the, what's the impact going to be, then, elsewhere across the UK? I mean, you said this is, has created a, a legal precedent here. Yeah. What's going to be the impact on, on sporting venues, on entertainment venues across the UK? Are other other venues going to feel they're going to have to follow suit? I hope so, yes. Um, I mean, obviously this case settled at the 11th hour, literally the night before trial. Um, but, I mean, other, other companies should follow suit. I mean, SMG are a huge company. Uh, and, you know, if they feel that, you know, they've admitted that they discriminated against Mr Pauli and the policy... Uh, and if they feel, feel, you know, that that is the case, then other companies should follow suit. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's an important point to take. Uh, um, you know, it's, we're very proud of Mr Pauly for having taken it, really. OK, well, thanks for uh, coming on the show this morning. That's Lucy Angus, who's the lawyer involved in the case from uh, Unity Law, which is a, a law firm based in Sheffield. Now at the heart of North Yorkshire. Adam Tomlinson at breakfast. BBC Radio York. Now this morning, victory for a disabled man who says ticket prices at York Barbican discriminated against him. The theatre has now agreed to change its policy. The lawyers for Doug Pawley says it's the first legal case of its kind and it will have an impact on all sporting and entertainment venues right across the UK. Well, Mr Pawley is uh, with us on the line. Doug, good morning. Good morning. Tell us what happened at the York Barbican. Well, we'd, uh, we'd booked to go and see Bill Bailey, or we'd attempted to do so. There's a number of us in the care home in which I live. Um, they said they'd got a policy where they sold the cheapest price tickets for carers, but at this particular performance, all the tickets were the same price. So they wanted to make us pay the same for carers as they would for anybody else. So you were going to have to pay two full price tickets? That's right, that's what, right, yes. What? Pay for ourselves and pay for the carers as well. Right, what normally happens? Well, to give an example, at the Bridgewater Hall in Manchester, they reduce both the disabled person's ticket and the carer's ticket so that disabled people don't end up paying any more than anywhere else. And there's lots of other theatres and um, venues around the country that do that as well. If the carer didn't go with you, would you be able to go on your own? No, that's the problem. We don't choose to have to need carers. Um, we need assistance with various different aspects of going, you know. Some people need assistance with the toilet or accessing the bar or even being able to get into the venue in the first place. So in other words, it's, it's pretty vital that when you go out to, to some venue for, for entertainment, you have to have your carer with you? 
That's right, yes. That's so, right. so how did it make you feel then when when you were confronted with this situation at the, at the York Barbican, you know, told you'd be charged for both your, yourself and your carer? I was very surprised, to be honest. I mean, it's fairly rare these days to come across that sort of attitude, and I was very disappointed that particularly after we'd raised it with them and asked if they would be prepared to reconsider, that they didn't do so. Um, I was more surprised than anything, and uh, I'm disappointed and frustrated. So, why did you then decide to, to take it to, to the legal state that you did? It's sad that I had to take it to the legal state. I mean, we approached them first to see if they would. Um, a lot of people aren't able to take things to the courts, and our legal system is such that people who are discriminated against have to take it to court themselves. There's nobody else who can take it for them. So I decided that I had to just to be able to get the redress that I wanted, really, to, to get them to change their policy to make it fair for us. Was it, was it worth it? I mean, was it, was it making more out of a situation, perhaps, the fact that you did take it to court? It took a lot out of me. It was a fairly big thing to do, or to have to do, but I am glad that it's made a change, and also it's now a change that if there are other places that still don't make similar changes, you know, you, you, we can point them to this and say, say, look, you, you, you're wrong, and please can you reconsider. How long has it been going on for, Paul, uh, Doug? Well, as far as I know, um, for, for, for forever, you know, I'm, I'm not aware that it has ever been any different at that venue, but then this is the first time that we tried to book anything there. And, so I, I don't and, know for definite. And, and, the, and the, the, the legal side of it, how, how long has that been going on for? Because the legal process can take some time, can't it? Oh, yes. It's, I think it's been about a year and a month in total. If I remember correctly, the phone call was made, I think, January last year, when we first attempted to book to see Bill Bailey there. Yes, it has taken quite some time. And we know now that there's been an out-of-court settlement before it actually went to court, and we know that the York Barbican is going to change its pocket policy regarding tickets. Is, is that the outcome you're looking for? Yes, it's brilliant that that's happened. It's sad that it happened so late. I mean, our barrister was actually on the train on the way to court to um, to, to fight this with us. It, um, they finally settled on the evening before the court case. It's brilliant, though, that they are now going to change their policy and they've admitted that they should have done so, you know, that they have discriminated against me. We so I'm really, really happy. We were speaking to one of your your legal team earlier on this morning and said you know the suggestion was made that it's the first legal case of its kind implications for sports and entertainment venues right across the uk this is a big deal here you've effectively made made a huge change I hope so. Um, it gives us something that we can then show to other venues that um, made this change. I mean, I th they are in the minority. I think this is fair to say that uh, the majority of entertainment venues have already made similar changes. And so for the few that haven't, we've now got something legal that we can show them, which they can use to make this change. You know, it, it can help persuade them, which is really Will you be going to the York Barbican again? Oh yes, we've been looking through their their future programme and I'm considering going to see Black Bike Band in the summer. It look, um, looks like a good concert. You'll enjoy that. <laughs> Doug, thanks ever so much for coming on the show this morning. Doug Pauley there, the man who's, uh, well, possibly changed the way disabled people can buy tickets, not only for themselves, but for their carers uh, as well.